Right, normal distribution. Now this is um, a bit different to binomial distribution. First of all, it's for continuous data, whereas the binomial distribution was for discrete data. Also, it's defined by the mean and the standard deviation. When we talked about the binomial, it was defined by n and p, the number of trials and the probability of success. For the normal dis distribution, we talk about the mean and the standard deviation. And we write it like this. x follows a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And so inside of that bracket, we put the variance sigma squared. It's symmetrical, so if we drew it, it would look like this where mu is that central value there and everything is um, distributed around the mean and we call that a bell-shaped curve. The area under the curve is what tells us the probability. So if we want the probability that x is less than this value here of x1 it would be the area under that curve. We could also find the area above a certain amount and we could find the area between two values. So each of those would give us the probability of it being less than that value or more than that value or in between those two values. Now we're going to start with the standard normal. That's the normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. So we call it z and it's denoted like this. Now this gives us the normal distribution table which you can find on your formula sheet or in the back of your textbook. You'll need to have that to hand for all of the questions on normal distribution. And here's some notation. If we want the probability that z is less than a particular value of z, that would we would call phi of that value. And that is the number that we find from the table. We've also got if um, the probability of z is greater than that uh, small value of z, we'd have to do 1 minus the probability that it was less than, so that would be 1 minus phi of z. That's also written above the table in your formula book, so you, you can be reminded of that. Let's see how this really works then. So we've got the probability that z is less than this particular number of uh, 0.312. So first of all we need our table we're going to find phi of 0.312. So let me show you how to do that. We look up each part of that number in turn and we add together the components. So we've got 0.31. Those two together give us 0.6217. And then we need to put the 2 on the end as well. So we read across that line for the 2. That tells us to add on 7 to that number. So we do 6217 plus 7, that's 6224. So our final answer is 0.6224. So the probability that z is less than 0.312 is 0.6224. Now this portion of the table just shows you the very top of it. Uh, you can of course use any part of that table and, it, and uh, if you have a look at your table now you'll see that it goes down quite a fair bit. Let's do this again so you can get some more practice. So this is the probability that z is more than 0.477. So that will be 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0.477. So 1 minus phi of it. So let's look up 0.477. So we've got 0.47 and a 7. Let's put those together. So add on that 25 to that first value of 6808 and we get 6833. So that's going to be 0.6833. Take it away from 1, 0.3167. Okay, next one. In between these two values. So let's have a think about what that looks like. We've got 0.491 and minus 0.2. And we're finding that area there in between those two values. So we can do the probability that the z is less than 0.491. That would give us that area. So then we need to take off the probability that z is less than minus 0.2 there. So the first one's easy. We can just do phi of that. But we need to use this result where phi of minus z is equal to 1 minus phi of z because of the symmetry of the curve. So if you think about that one being minus z, you could match that to being the, the z on the other side being of the positive z. So we would have to do 1 minus the phi of z there because that's 
what phi of z would look like. So we'll do 1 minus phi of 0.2. So we need to look those up. So the first one, 0 0.491, we're going to do 6879 plus 4 to get 6883. And then phi of 0.2, we don't have anything to add on there. We just take off that uh, 0.5793 from 1. And there we have our final answer. Just one thing to note, if you're talking about less than or less than or equal to, when it comes to normal distribution we don't treat them as any different because we're talking about large um, populations, large distributions, um, the difference between less than and less than or equal to is negligible so we don't define any difference there.